Atlantis Mirror, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, Atlantis, we are ready. Good morning, America. This is Houston. Please call Atlantis Mirror for a voice check. Atlantis Mirror, this is Good Morning America. Can you hear me? Good morning, America. We are ready for questions. Loud and clear. Great. Shannon, I'd like to start with you, if I can. You've been up in space for six months. You must be incredibly anxious to come home. Well, I'll guarantee you I'll be on the right side of the hatch whenever it gets closed. That, I take it, is where the exit is? Well, it's wherever Bill Reedy is. <laughs> He's the uh, commander that's going to take the shuttle home, and I'm going to be on the shuttle when it gets home. You have admitted in the past to being a bit homesick. What have you missed most while up in space these past six months? Well, obviously, I'd better say my family, because they would uh, feel really bad if they thought they came in second to some real gooey dessert. <laughs> How are you feeling physically after being in space this long? Oh, right now, I feel great. I mean, I feel just the same as I did when I left. I you know, couldn't feel uh, any better. The last time somebody spent this much time in space, they lost a lot of weight, that sort of thing. Have you noticed any changes in your body and the way you're feeling at all? I haven't no, no, I haven't noticed any changes, and, um, you know, my clothes are fitting about the same, so uh, unfortunately I don't think I've lost a whole lot of weight. Ken, can you describe for me your living conditions aboard Mir? What was, did you have your own private compartment in which to sleep, that sort of thing? Well, as you most probably are aware, uh, Mir is composed of uh, several different modules that have been, uh, you know, that have come up and been added at different times. And I uh, spent, I slept in Spectra, which is uh, one of the modules that uh, has been recently added. And so it was just really nice. It was just a real nice uh, place to, uh, uh, you know, spend the night. How big a space did you have that you could call your own? Well, I didn't call any space my own because uh, where I slept during the day, you know, people were working. So there was no place that I called my own. It's just that at night no one was working in there, so I was sleeping in there. You must be anxious to finally have some private space or personal space, as much fun as it may be aboard all these, the space station here with these Russian cosmonauts. It'll be really good to get home. I'll agree with you. If you can, tell me how you do the basic things in life, like take a shower or do your laundry on board a space station. Well, you don't. Uh, I, I haven't had a uh, shower or a bath since I left. Uh, I guess I left when? March 22nd? And uh, the best thing about doing the laundry, you don't have to do it. When your clothes get dirty, you just throw them away. As exciting as it must be to be uh, in orbit for six months on board the space station, there must have been periods of genuine boredom. Well, I really and, uh, and truly did not ever get bored. I always had something to do. And uh, in the evenings, if, you know, if I had time, I had uh, plenty of books to read. And whenever you have a good book, uh, you know, you don't get bored. What have you been eating food-wise? What do you guys eat up there on board the mirror? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I misunderstood. I thought you said, what have you been reading? Um, <laughs> what have we been eating? We've been eating the mixture of the Russian food and the American food. John Bleha, as you listen to Shannon describe all of this, what are you thinking? You're about to embark on a four-month mission of your own up there. Uh... Well, actually, uh, Shannon and I, as you know, have known each other a long time, and uh, we trained and flew a couple space shuttle missions together, and then we trained in the Russian language, and we trained at Star City together. So we actually talked about all of this a lot uh, before Shannon left in March, uh, and she's been telling me the same kind of things she's been telling you this morning. I'm looking forward to the uh, stay on Mir. I've had a lot of fun in the last day uh, meeting my crewmates and talking to them and eating with them. So uh, Shannon's given me a check out, and I'm looking forward to the stay. The two of you are part of a pretty elite club. What kinds of advice, Shannon, have you given John as you end your mission and he begins his? Well, I told him just to take it, uh, you know, day by day and uh, not 
to worry about anything. It all works out, and uh, just enjoy every day as it comes. Shannon, you did not sign on for a full six months in space. How did you feel when your return to Earth was delayed not once but twice? Well, obviously, I mean, uh, I had been looking forward to coming home when? In August? But right. uh, I fully understand the reasons why the flight was delayed, and uh, I think that was a very good decision. And actually, it was sort of a plus for me, as it turned out, because I got to see uh, a new crew come up and uh, get to see how crews exchange. And I got to say goodbye to Yuri and Yuri rather than them saying goodbye to me. And it's sort of easier to say goodbye when somebody else leaves than it is for you to leave, if you can understand what I'm saying. So it, it all worked out. John, you signed on for a four-month mission, the same length of a mission that Shannon originally signed on for. Are you at all leery, given her experience and extended stay, that the same thing might happen to you? Uh, certainly it's possible. And again, uh, a number of months ago, uh, Shannon and I talked about the fact that uh, on these types of missions, uh, you need to plan that you may return later than the original plan so that you're psychologically prepared for that and uh, the cosmonauts at Star City had told us that during our training there so to answer your question directly uh, I hope I'm ready and uh, I, I think I'll be able to handle that if we are delayed. The only thing I would add is that uh, I personally uh, and I know Shannon does too because we've talked about it a lot uh, think this is a fantastic program that we're doing with the Russians uh, this kind of cooperation uh, in space is something the Russians do very well, and we in America do very well. It's something we both have done well in the past, and it's, so it's a good common meeting ground, and um, I think it's a good start to an international space station and for space exploration in the future. No, I guess I've been passing all the messages on that I can think of. But uh, I would just like to say thank you to all the uh, great people that have worked on the ground to support this mission because the mission is not just, you know, the astronaut that's visible, but there's been great support. And that's why I've had such a good time is because of all the great support. And I'd also like to thank uh, Yuri and Yuri because they were just super to be in space with. And uh, I just couldn't have asked for two nicer people to work with. And so I just appreciate everybody that worked so hard to make it such a great experience. And if they have box for ETTF. Yes, sir. Okay, down here on the ground, it appears to us that it's shut down. Okay, well, all the breakers are good. Uh, we're looking at an event timer of event 29 minutes, 1260 seconds, 12, still incrementing. Planet Space Hub Hawk for ETTF. Looks like uh, we just had a little problem with the uh, event timer. Everything looks okay now. Well, that's great news. And uh, for Eris, uh, I've finally got a terminate file download command ready for transmit box, uh, but I still got the hourglass. And I'll try to okay that and see if I can get out of it this way without rebooting the computer. Okay. Terry, we're looking over your shoulder, and we still have the same uh, monochrome video signal we've been seeing all along. Wondered if uh, Carl or anyone had made progress on message 60, which had us routing and one switch throw in 019 to try and solve it. Copy. Um, when we switched to the flight deck, we saw no signal, so uh, we're just puzzled, and there's no rush at all at your convenience. We know you're busy.
Thanks, Reeds. And uh, we do, uh, well, let's see, we've got the flight deck camera right now. This is Mission Control Houston here in the flight control room. The Orbit-1 team of flight controllers remains on station, continuing to work with the crew on board the joint Atlantis Mir spacecraft as the activities on board primarily are focused at the transfer activities between the two spacecraft. You were broken. Say again uh, on transfer. Yeah, Bill, just thought I'd give you all uh, an update if you're ready to copy. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah. Yesterday in my tally I sent down, I forgot to mention we did get the Crater B oven over and installed where the IOC was and ready for entry. And today we got another big piece, the Kavant B, and we've also got all the small uh, pieces of Russian hardware. We've got about uh, oh, two-thirds of John Science already over on uh, Perota. We'll get uh, started on Shannon's bags coming back pretty shortly.